Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is Could You Not Terry for One Hour. Well, it is, of course, the January 29th edition, and uh, tomorrow, of course, will be our service. But before we do anything, when it comes to praise and worship or prayer, we're going to do this right now. So, Father in heaven, we thank you again for the opportunity to spend this time together. And we ask that, Lord, right now, that you would bless the prayers that are offered and the songs that are sung. And we ask it all now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is no rock, there is no God like our God. No other name worthy of all our praise. The rock of salvation that cannot be moved is proven himself to be faithful and true. There is no rock, there is no God like God. like a God, no other name worthy of all our praise. The rock of salvation that cannot be moved has proven himself to be faithful and true. There is no rock, there is no God like a rock of another one which is revive us O Lord a song from Carmen revive us O Oh, Lord, revive. 
As you know, we have a lot of things going on in our world today. But before we do anything, of course, is could you not tarry for one hour? The one thing that we do know about, of course, our Savior, Jesus Christ, he is right now making intercession for us right now with groanings that cannot be uttered. And that's why it's so important to spend time in prayer. And it's my privilege to be able to pray with you every single day. And, uh, and I enjoy doing this. And I think it's so essential that we pray with both intelligence, with discernment, with understanding, and as well with wisdom. So Father, today, as we begin our prayer time, we're so grateful that in this moment, Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to your purpose. We're grateful, Lord, that no matter what we face today, no matter what difficulties, adjustments we have to make, Lord, you have everything under control, whether we gain or whether we lose whether we are on the success side or even from time to time when we fail. Lord, the one thing that we do know is that when we fall down, we need to get up. There's an old Japanese proverb, Lord, that went like this, fall down seven times, get up eight. And Lord, that's what we're going to do today. We recognize that we have an enemy who would love to rob, kill, and destroy what we are doing today. But Father, we're not about to let that happen. So right now in this moment, Lord, we're going to put on our armor. We're putting on that helmet of salvation, Lord, that we can protect our mind during this time of prayer. And that those things which are right and pure and holy and praiseworthy and virtuous, lovely and excellent, these are the things that we're going to be thinking about, Lord, throughout our prayer time. Number two, we're putting on that breastplate of righteousness that, Lord, today we're going to walk in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He is, of course, our righteousness. And what we want to do is we want in our hearts to produce righteousness, peace, and joy, which are the characteristics of the kingdom of God. And we know that, Lord, wherever our heart is, so is, of course, our treasure. And our treasure today, Lord, cannot be of the, uh, of the natural type. It has to be the supernatural. We have to fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And that's what we're going to do right now. Also, Lord, we're putting on the belt of truth. Now, Lord, we know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through you. And so we declare right now that, Lord, we are preparing for battle. We put on the boots of peace. Lord, we thank you that today we are clothed with righteousness. We are clothed with, of course, uh, truth. And of course, we have that helmet of salvation, Lord, that we are clothed with salvation. And then all of that enables us, Lord, to go into our world and take it. But more importantly, Lord, not just take the land, but also as well, bring peace to a to a land. You see, part of that whole process of going into our world, Lord, is to help calm, help to mediate, 
and also as well bring to pass the peace that passes all understanding. That is our, our role and responsibility. Lord, our world is walking in darkness and we have the light. Our world is walking in conflict and chaos and warfare and strife, and we can bring into it order and as well, peace. And we want to do that today because it says, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. And we want to be that way. Lord, by position, we are, of course, the sons of God. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, for those that we love and care about, and even those we don't even know yet, because Lord, there are people that will come across our path in our life journey that Lord, we will have an opportunity to share Jesus Christ with them. We like Jesus are on a rescue mission. That's one of the things that we find in the book of Galatians chapter one is the fact that Jesus Christ came to rescue. Like the old song says, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Lord, that's what we're called to do today. And we want to do it, Lord, with clarity. We want to do it with power and authority and anointing. So Lord, wherever we go today, whether it is shopping, whether it is uh, to another person's home, whether it is, Lord, to a walk and meeting people, let us be those instrument of priests. Then, Lord, we take up that shield of faith. Now, that is that wonderful defensive uh, apparatus that we have, Lord, that part of our equipment that allows us to extinguish every fiery dart of the wicked one. And we want to do that today. Lord, we do not want to have our lives or anyone else being subject to being robbed, killed, or destroyed. We don't want to let accusation, temptation, or deception, Lord, keep us from the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. And so we claim that right now, Lord. It is going to have, Lord, this wonderful shield of faith. Lord, is going to cover us, and it has the ability, Lord, to extinguish every fiery dart of the wicked one. It's like a fire extinguisher, Lord, and we're so grateful to that, that this shield of faith is our fire extinguisher. Then we take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And in this moment, Lord, we are choosing right now to use the Word of God in every aspect of our prayer today. That, Lord, today it will be our offensive and defensive weapon against the enemy today. And we also know that no matter how he uses it, for example, Lord, we are remembering today how the enemy operated when Jesus and him were having their confrontation in the, uh, in the wilderness temptation. The enemy would use his, his subtility and he would say, turn these bread, turn this stone into bread. And Jesus would simply say, man does not live by bread alone. Immediately in the mind of the enemy, says, oh, he's using the word of God. So then he flips the switch over and he kind of uses the word of God. He says, well, it does say in Psalm 91 that the angels of the Lord will cover you or catch you if you jump off this cliff. And Jesus says, I'm not putting the Lord your God to a test. That's the way the oper enemy operates. He always twists it. He always turns it into a, 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 a deception. He's the father of all lies. And then, Lord, lastly, he said, I'll give you all the things of this world. And, he, and Jesus didn't dispute that. But Jesus said this, you're to worship the Lord your God only. Now, Lord, we know that it's the word of God that tells us in 1 John 3, 8, that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, and we are going to stand upon that today. With that, Lord, in mind, we're going to build a hedge of protection around us from the wonderful truths found in Psalm 91. Psalm 91 reminds us about three things when it comes to protection. Number one, we are his children. He has made us, Lord, 
and set his love on us today. Lord, we have a relationship with you because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He brought that message to Nicodemus. And then he said, the son of man did not come to condemn the world, but through the world or through him, the world might be saved. Father, we know today that you've set your love on us. We're responding to your love by choosing, Lord, to love you with every fiber of our being and allowing that healing love, that balm of Gilead of love, that ointment and oil combination going into the scars of our past. In fact, Paul says this, forgetting those things which are behind and looking forward to those things which are ahead. Also as well, he said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the old things have passed away. Behold, all things are brand new. We're so grateful for that, Lord. Right now, in this moment, as we, bet, we build this hedge of protection, Father, today, in the name of Jesus, set your love us. Secondly, Lord, you have made us a habitation. It's so good to be the temple of the Holy Spirit, to have the Holy Spirit right now anointing us, enabling us, empowering us, Lord, giving us, Lord, the wisdom, the clarity, the boldness, and of course, Lord, the wonderful power that we need to be able, Lord, to win in the spiritual and natural realm. We know that the enemy will do anything he can to stop us, but we refuse to be stopped. Today, in the name of Jesus, you've made us your habitation. You've set your love on us. And Father, you've called us by name. Oh, it's so wonderful to be called by name, to be called a child of God, a son and daughter of God, to have an inheritance, Lord, to be a to be a part of the family of God, like the old song says. Lord, we thank you for that today. Now, Lord, we're preparing for tomorrow and today. Lord, right now, there are people in a meeting in on this day, which is Saturday, and also on Sunday. And Father, it doesn't matter. That's what Paul tells us in Romans uh, 14. It doesn't matter what day we meet. What matters is that, Lord, we are gathered together in the house of the Lord. Now, what we're going to do, Lord, right now is we're going to call those things which are not as if they are. We're going to speak, as it says in Isaiah 43, that, Lord, we're going to call people from the north, the south, the East and the West. We're going to call them to our church situation right now. Satan, in the name of Jesus, world, in the name of Jesus, and human opposition, in the name of Jesus, by the power of Jesus Christ, and in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the word of God, we're declaring your power your influence and your ability to stop those that belong to us to be broken right now in Jesus' name. The Bible says, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And we are declaring that right now in Jesus' name, that Lord, you are going to bring people to our houses of worship. Whether it's the church that I pastor in Cornerstone or any other church, whether they meet in a building or they meet in a home or a hall, wherever they meet, Father, in the name of Jesus, we are releasing them now. Now, Father, as well, in Jesus' name, as we speak to the four different directions, we are declaring that right now the Holy Spirit is drawing them to us. Those that belong to us, we are releasing right now in Jesus' name. And we're so grateful that, Lord, your power is being released right now. Lord, we're going to call children and young people and young adults, young families and families with teenagers, empty nesters and seniors. We're going to call our unsaved loved ones. We're going to call 
those that are in the fellowship of God, the house of God. Lord, there are people that belong to us right now. They're men, women, children, and young people. We're declaring that right now in Jesus' name, they may be disenfranchised, they could be backslidden, or they could be unsaved. But wherever they are, in a city or a town, a village, a hamlet or settlement, a state, a province, a territory, a canon or a county, we are declaring in the name of Jesus that they are going to come. Now, Lord, we thank you that they may be in North America, South America. They may be in Europe or in Africa or Asia or one of the great um, countries that are in Oceania or even the continent of Australia. Father, no matter where they live, no matter who they are, we are calling them right now in Jesus' name and declaring that they belong to us right now. And no hindrance, no blockage, nothing is going to keep them from coming from to, from us today. And we declare today that, Lord, your power is going to begin to be released. Now, Father, we know that there are people who love the moving of the Holy Spirit. We are calling those worshipers, those praisers, Lord, right now into our churches in the name of Jesus. We're calling them to my church, Cornerstone Community Church, and we're calling them, Lord, to every church where they belong. Secondly, Lord, we're calling those who love the moving of the Holy Spirit, Oh God, we pray that Joel 2.28 would become our reality, that you would pour out your spirit upon us, Lord, and that all of us, Lord, would receive something very special today. We know that, for example, Lord, there are nine gifts of the Spirit, tongues, interpretation of prophecy, faith and healing and miracles, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment. We are releasing them, Lord, into our churches right now. We are also releasing, Lord, the wonderful fruit of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the kindness, the goodness, Lord the righteousness, Lord, the faithfulness, Lord, the gentleness and the self-control that comes from you. Also as well, Lord, in this time and place of prayer, we are asking that, Lord, right now, that you would establish us in homes and places where we meet, wherever it may be, Lord, you are gonna begin, oh God, to bring to us, Lord, that wonderful blessing of the Lord, success, generosity, Lord, and as well, prosperity. Father, it tells us in 3 John 2 that we are going to be in prosperity and health even as our soul prospers. Thank you for that. Thank you as well that, Lord, you're going to begin to bring to our churches people who love to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are releasing our prayer warriors, we are releasing our intercessors. We are releasing those special individuals that have the ministry of prayer. And Lord, we thank you that they're joining our churches right now. And we are declaring that in the name of Jesus, your power, your might, your dominion is falling upon them. We break frustration and discouragement. We break off, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, all forms of depression and oppression in the name of Jesus. And we are calling people back to health and wholeness and victory right now in the name of Jesus. All forms of mental attack, whatever they may be, Lord, we are declaring them null and void right now because, Lord, your word says this, that you've not given us a spirit of fear. We're throwing off, Lord, right now any fear. And we're receiving right now your power, your love, and of course, your sound mind. Lord, it is love that is the foundation of the power that we are beginning to exhibit and demonstrate in our lives. And also as well, Lord, we are receiving the soundness of mind. We will have a mental uh, goodness, Lord, and mental health right now in Jesus' name. Also as well, Lord, we pray right now for those who have the ministry of prayer. Now we've talked about it already. Release them, Lord, right now. And the people who love the word of God. Father, we know that it's the word of God that is quick and powerful. 
and sharper than any two-edged sword. And we want to make sure that, Lord, we are rightly dividing the word of truth. Also as well, Lord, we are praying right now in Jesus' name that, Father, you are going to release the anointing that's going to break the yoke. We are going to use the word of God, Lord, in every aspect of our prayer. We're going to season and we're going to salt and we're going to use the word of God as our offensive and defensive weapon, Lord, within our prayer times. Also as well, Lord, right now, we are releasing people who love to give. Now, Lord, we know that God loves a cheerful giver. And Lord, we know that as we sow into our world with our time, our talents, and resources, we know that, Lord, what's going to happen out of that is this, that, Father, you are going to give us, Lord, the abundance, 30, 60, and 100-fold. Lord, we're not asking today that we would become so wealthy and we would hoard it unto ourselves. Instead, Lord, what we want to do is we want to release right now in Jesus' name that, Father, we would be able to meet every need and touch every situation. That's why we're praying for abundance. And we're praying for givers to come into our churches so that we don't suffer any lack. We know that during this pandemic, many churches have been struggling financially, but Lord, that's not going to happen anymore. Today, in the name of Jesus, we are releasing finances into our world and we are declaring that, Lord, we are going to see an abundance in God. You supply every need and you do it with abundance and you do it, Lord, with success and prosperity. Lord, as well, we pray for those who serve. Father, in all these things, we pray that we will have a servant attitude and a servant heart that as we, as we serve you, Lord, and we do it with diligence, we do it with obedience, we do it, Lord, with thankfulness and gratitude, because, Lord, we're not serving ourselves, we're serving the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are encouraging others. We are putting into our world acts of kindness and acts of love that are going to change those around us. And we thank you, Lord, for that in the name of Jesus. Well, just give me a sec. I'm going to go get a, a little drink here. It just uh, my, my coffee is, or my tea is just off to the side. Father, we're so grateful. We're so grateful today that you can do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what we're able to ask or even imagine. So as we pray for our churches, as we call them from the different directions, as we speak, Lord, into their life situation, Lord, we thank you today that you are the one who is calling people into these places. We're thanking you, Lord, that right now in Jesus' name, that you are pouring out your spirit upon us and you are bringing that victory and that breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I am reminded today that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And Father, we want to see that happen for the praise and glory of God. And Lord, we're so grateful for the wonderful moving of the Holy Spirit that we are experiencing today. And Lord, we want to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. From thy presence, O oh Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew.
new and right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me and renew a right spirit within me and renew a right spirit within me well that's what David prayed in Psalm 51. Now it's interesting that David actually, the whole incident of course was not a good situation for David. If you follow the story, which is found of course in 2 Samuel chapter 11, where David had uh, basically, you know, he was in Jerusalem, not going out into battle. And he saw a beautiful woman named Bathsheba. Now, he saw her bathing. And, uh, of course, he allowed his um, desires to run ahead of him. And what happened was this. he, Being the king, he could do anything he wanted. And, of course, him and Bathsheba had relationships. And the outgrowth of that was the fact that Bathsheba got pregnant. And so he brought Uriah, who happened to be her husband, back to Jerusalem to try and disguise what would happen. He said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to have you sleep with your husband, and in that way, it'll be okay. Well, Uriah, through a series of events, didn't do that. And so David decided, which unfortunately he did, he thought, what I'll do is I'll send a letter with Bash, with Uriah, and this is the irony, he sent the letter to Joab, who was the commander of the Jewish army, the Israeli army, who was at the time at war with the Ammonites, and they were trying to take the city of Rabbah, which happened to be the capital of the Ammonite empire. And David sent this letter, and he, he simply said, make sure that Uriah gets put up at the front, and uh, so that's what happened, and Uriah was killed. And so when they found out, well, they of course, there was a, a certain mourning period. And then what David did was he came in and he took Bathsheba for his wife. Well, they had this baby. And then unfortunately, um, well, it wasn't unfortunate. The prophet Nathan, the prophet, came along and uh, basically exposed David. And David of course, was devastated. He was devastated because, number one, he had caused the death of an innocent man, and number two, he had been caught in the act of adultery. Even though he was a king, he was still guilty in the eyes of God. And so David, of course, repented. Now, there was consequences to what had happened. There always is consequences to what we do. And David and Bathsheba lost the child. But the other upside is that David repented, and that's what Psalm 51 is all about, where David said, Lord, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. See, David, when he had fully repented, and 1 John 1, 9 says, 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and he's just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that a great promise? David repented. And the next child that came out of his and Bathsheba's relationship was Solomon, who was known as the wisest man of his generation. And next to Jesus Christ was, of course, the greatest and wisest man that Israel ever had. You see, out of the ashes, out of the consequences of our sins, actually, that's what it says. He gives us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. When we allow God to do his perfect work, when we say, Lord, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn away from those things. So let's do that right now. Father, like David of old, we're gonna turn away from those sins and weights that so easily beset us. And Father, in this moment, we're gonna believe that you're gonna give us beauty for ashes, that oil of joy for mourning, that garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We have experienced these things in our lives. We can't live life without experiencing something like that. But Lord, there's another side to our story. I love the wonderful illustration of Gideon. When the angel came to the uh, man named Gideon and called him a mighty man of valor, even though he hadn't done one single brave thing yet, God was looking at him in the future. And he looks at us, not as we are right now, but as we are going to become. And we're so grateful for that, Lord, that you are looking at us, not as we are right now, because you know that our story is still being written. You know that there are still chapters in our life story. Father, we don't know what each day brings to us. So that's why it says the mercies of God are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. We know that, Lord, the reality of the situation is this. There is no guarantee that we're going to make it throughout the remainder of this day. But Lord, we do trust you because the Bible says the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. And we desperately, Lord, want you to order our steps today. We desire, O oh God, to do your will. In fact, it was Paul who said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is our spiritual worship. Lord, we're going to do that right now. We're just going to present ourselves to you right now. And Lord, we know that giving our lives to you, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, we know that all the things are going to be added to end. But Lord, it says we cannot conform and we don't want to conform to the images or the standards of this world. We know that, Lord, they bring us into darkness, not light. We're going to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that every aspect of our lives are going to come into complete and total unity with the Spirit of God. We want that today. And Father, with that thought in mind, we're going to go forth into victory today. We're going to thank you that, Lord, in this moment, you're going to regenerate us. You're going to rejuvenate us. You are going to transform us. You are going to begin, Lord, to do a deeper and more powerful work. I love where it says, as deep calls unto deep. So God is calling us into that deeper, most powerful relationship. And Lord, we're believing for that today. We're not just believing that, Lord, for ourselves, but we're believing for, for the transformation of our society. Lord, right now, we know that across this land, Lord, there are many things that are going on, things that we don't understand, areas of our political social, economic area where, Lord, we just go, wow, what's happening? 
Sometimes it almost feels like we're in chaos. But Father, we know that you can bring, of course, order to chaos. We know that, Lord, you can bring into our nation and our nation, our communities, our homes, our churches, our marriages, and in our lives, Lord, we need you. We need to be revived. We need to be rejuvenated. We need to, Lord, be renewed. And we are praying for that restoration and transformation process right now. Lord, it begins with us. It begins with us drawing a circle around ourselves and not coming out of that place. And Father, we do pray for conviction, not condemnation because it's conviction that is needed today. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's gonna convict of three things, and we're gonna pray for that today. First of all, Lord, that people would begin to realize that they're sinners. Unless a person admits that they're a sinner, they're never gonna get saved. They're not gonna see the sin as a problem. They're going to see themselves as, you know what, I'm okay. I'm a bit better than that other person, but I'm okay. And Lord, there's another lie that is promoted so many times. And that is simply this, that we can somehow, some way, get our own salvation. And that's a lie. Also as well, there's another one that's often promoted. And that is the fact that by association, our mom, our dad, or a member of our family is a Christian, so that makes us a Christian. No, it doesn't. You know, you can go into a church building and not be a Christian, just like you can walk into a garage and it doesn't make you a car. Father, today in the name of Jesus, we pray that people will see themselves as you see them, a sinner who needs to be saved. And once they make that decision, that Father, that will be the day of their salvation. Because we know that the moment that we recognize and see and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ in whatever form it is presented, that's the moment of salvation. That's the moment where, Lord, we make a decision about what we're going to do with our life and our situation. Pray that, Lord, we would be convicted of our sins, that, Lord, we would see ourselves as we truly are, like David did. He said, I am the man. He never excused it. He did not justify it. He did not try to deflect it. He didn't blame somebody else. Oh, it's, your, it's Uriah, because he didn't do his husbandly duty. It's Bathsheba, because she was taking a bath that day. No, we have to take responsibility for our own situation and our own life. Secondly, Lord, judgment. Now, Father, that is a reality that we don't want to really face. But one day we're going to have to stand before you. I remember the story of Jonathan Edwards, who spent three days and three nights praying before his message, calling out to God, saying, God, we need revival. He was echoing the words of John Knox when he said, give me Scotland lest I die. He himself said, Lord, give me New England lest I die. And of course, we know that he went into his sermon and he preached the sermon sinners in the hands of an angry God. And he was talking about the fact that people, if they don't get right with God, whether we like it or not, whether we understand it or not, whether we agree with it or not, that is where they're going to find themselves. Lord, I saw an adage today where there's a headstone and someone standing above and they're saying, well, now he rests in peace. And below is... Uh, a, a picture of hell. They're not resting in peace. Lord, they're in pain and sorrow. They're like the rich man. He simply said, let Abraham, he said, Abraham, send Lazarus so that I can at least 
get my tongue dipped. Father, that is a reality that we don't want anyone to face. Jesus said that none should perish. Peter said, God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants all of them to come to the knowledge of the truth. And Lord, that's what we're praying for, that people would realize that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And we don't want anybody to go there, Lord. That's why we're praying for people today. That's why we're praying the next thing, that the Holy Spirit would speak to them about their sin and that there are consequences to the choices that they make. I Jesus said this, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? We have people today that are gaining the whole world, but they're losing their souls. And Jesus said, what value can you put on a soul? There is no value that you can put on a soul. It is priceless and precious in God's sight. And that's why Jesus Christ came, because he came to save us, to turn us from sinners into saints, to turn us from the lost to the found. That's what he came. And Father, we can be made righteous. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, what we need to do is believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. We want to see that happen. Lord, we stand a wonderful, wonderful promise for our loved ones today. Acts 16, 31, that says, not only shall we be saved, but our household as well. We're also, Lord, making that wonderful declaration of Proverbs 22, 6, train a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. Father, we want to see that happen in our life situation. We want to be able to declare like Joshua did in the days that he was finished his ministry after he had conquered Canaan and he was doing his final instructions to the nation of Israel. He said, listen, you can choose today who you serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What a statement. The patriarch of his family, Joshua, said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Lord, I pray that that will be our aim and goal. And as fathers and as leaders in our home, I pray today that the men will be like Job, who offered sacrifices and prayers daily for his family. Lord, we are offering that sacrifice of praise and prayer to you today. With our lips, we're praying that, Lord, our families are gonna be saved. James, or I should say, Paul told us, in the book of Corinthians that Lord, because of our salvation, our family is favored in God's sight. And we thank you for your divine favor. We thank you for your divine breakthrough. We thank you that Lord, this is our time of breakthrough right now in Jesus name. That Lord, we're gonna begin to see a move of God. Lord. We're going to be like Paul said when he talked about Abraham. Abraham believed the Lord for 25 years. He never lost his faith. He may have sometimes wondered, but you see, Lord, in all of that time period, Abraham trusted God that the promise of God would be done it would be yes and amen, and that there would be victory and breakthrough in that regards. We thank you, Lord, for that today. And we thank you, Lord, today as well, that, Lord, we are going to see a wonderful move of God, that we're going to see a breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. And we're going to call those things which are not as if they are. What are we going to call today? we're going to call household salvation. We're going to call renewal and revival, Lord, into our churches and our family situations. We're believing for transformation, Lord, of our communities, our provinces, and our country. We know that, Lord, when we humble ourselves and pray,
When we seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, which we have done and which we will continue daily doing. Lord, your promise is, and there are three things. Number one, you'll hear from heaven. Behold, the Lord's hand is not so short that he cannot save, or his ear so deaf that he cannot hear. Lord, you hear every single prayer. In fact, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount that, Lord, when a little sparrow falls to the ground, you know it. You also said that, Lord, Solomon in all his glory was not adorned as one of the flowers of the field. So we know that you hear our prayers. Secondly, you forgive our sins. Lord, you do it individually and you also do it nationally. We saw many times in the Old Testament, the kings of Judah repenting before you and seeing you bring national restoration. That's what we want to see, Lord, national restoration. That's why we're praying for our municipal, our federal, and our provincial leaders, that, Lord, they would walk with integrity, transparency, accountability, and also as well, Lord, honesty and truthfulness. Lord, we're praying that righteousness would be restored. We know that, Lord, my country of Canada or other countries around the world are not, Lord, beyond redemption or without touch. We know that, Lord, you can touch our nation and we need to see that happen. We need to come up from the upper echelons of national leadership to provincial leadership to municipal leadership, Lord. In every area, we want to see our land healed and we want to see it restored. You said you'd hear from heaven, forgive our sins and heal our land. Father, we know that there are many out there that need healing, whether it's on a national level or a personal level, whether, Lord, it is a spiritual need, a physical need, emotional, intellectual, financial, family. We know that you can meet that need today. And we're excited about that, Lord. One final thing we pray before we close today. Lord, would you bring conviction upon people let them, Lord, know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are speaking to their hearts. Break down the walls and the barriers. Open up their eyes that they may see. Open up their ears that they may hear. Open up their minds that they would be able to understand and not suffer from spiritual dementia. Father, open up their hearts because you said, in the book of Ezekiel, that you could turn that heart of stone into a heart of flesh. And that's what we want to see happen today. We want to see those hearts that are hard to be toned, turned into hearts of flesh. That's what we want to see happen. Father, bring your conviction upon people today. Bring your healing upon people today. Help us, Lord, to see the victory Lord, we're believing for that today and we're believing for that tomorrow. Father, we want to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. water to my soul. 
Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus. You're the risen and exalted one, Well, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. And I just want to remind you that it is important to go to the house of the Lord, wherever it may be. If you're looking for an in-person service, I would love for you to join us at Cornerstone Hall. We're in St. Albert, number 6 Tashay Street, and we'd love to have you join us. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. You have yourself a great and godly day. Father, we thank you today for the time that we spent together. We have spent an hour in your presence, and we're so grateful for that. And now, Lord, we thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. You have yourself a great and godly day.